Hey guys, and welcome to You Have to Win the Game. This is a platformer that's kind of difficult. We're going to play it on original, we're going to play in cat mode. Yeah. So, this game's kind of hard, and there's three different modes you can play this on. Which is normal mode, YOLO mode, and cat mode. In normal mode, you get infinite lives. In YOLO mode, you get one life. But it's a bit too hard for me. And cat mode, you get to play as a cat, and you have nine lives. And we're going to get 100% in the normal campaign. Which is sort of the standard world, I suppose. You gotta try to not die. We only get nine lives, as I mentioned before. And we're gonna get 100% by visiting every room and picking up every single pickup in the game. And some of those are money bags, some of those are, like, hearts and things. Like, that is a money bag over there, but we can't go there because there's a wall in the way. But, we're just gonna traverse this world. It's kind of a quiet game, for sure. There's not much music. And near enough everything kills you. If you touch a spike, you die. If you touch a snake, you die. If you touch water, you die. It's just, there's a lot of death in this game and it's, it's kind of hard. And there's some hard things with getting 100%. And you get a mildly different ending when you play as a cat. It doesn't matter if you get 100% or not as a cat when you beat it, but there you go. Money bag over there, gonna pick it up, makes that noise when you pick it up. And I'm just taking a very specific route, which I practice because I, I wanted to be sure that I could actually do this, so... Just pay attention, and every now and then I'll talk about hard bits. Like this boss, uh, boss over here, he's not, he's not that difficult. But in a second we're gonna deal with him. And then I'll actually, like, say more words, but until then we're just gonna focus on taking a very specific route through this game. And picking up as many money bags as possible. So, this dude, he shoots the balls and he's kind of scary, but if you sort of just follow some of the balls, it becomes pretty easy to find a path in between all of them. And we get the Cerulean Aura, which activates blue ghost blocks, which is these. You may have seen this screen before, because we went past it previously. And from here we can go down. But picking that up immediately does block our passage to... Another money bag, which we're going to be seeing in just a moment. Again, these snakes will insta-kill you, so be a little careful. Also, if you press down, you go through platforms, which- well, certain platforms, which is kind of important. But because we picked up that blue cerulean aura, we can't go through there, so unfortunately we're gonna have to pick that up later. Or we could just kill ourselves trying to get it, but I don't really want to do that. If you die, you land at one of the bells, like the last one you touch, the one, like, that you can see in the, in the top left over there. And those count as checkpoints, but I don't want—I don't really want to die right now. So this screen's forever. If we can't go back anymore, we're just sort of stuck here unless we go down. But there's a money bag over there, so we're just gonna wait for this thing to go there and just sort of jump past everything and nothing to worry about. This is actually one of the more tricky screens for sure, and probably one of the harder parts at the beginning of the game. I'm actually gonna go back and do that again, because if you do this wrong, you just die, and I don't really want to die. With this one, you gotta wait until it goes up, and then you can. Go underneath the first one and jump over the second one. And then with the third one you can just go underneath it. This room you want to do kind of quick, because if you don't, then the bat and the platform kind of go out of sync. You can jump now, but it's a little bit trickier than jumping one time later. Because it sets the bat up a little bit nicer. We unfortunately died, so I'm actually just going to reset the room by going up there. You can go left, but you just end up back in the previous room again. And I don't really want to deal with that, because we just have to redo the entire thing. Hence, this room is called You Really Shouldn't Go Left. And, uh, unfortunately, this, this, is a, this is a good part to just mess up repeatedly. But if you mess it up, like, not in too horrible of a way, at least you don't die, I suppose. But let's just do this the quick method. Which is a little bit scarier for sure, but it, it, it at least works, you know? Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So this is the Tower of Sorrows. If you just never jump, you never die here. Which is lovely. It actually makes this a lot easier. And if you fall down, you just keep falling down and switch between the two sour, like the two towers, which is like the Tower of Sorrow and the Tower of Regret or something. But for now, we're just gonna keep on uh, moving on, try to get the second power up. I'm pretty much just gonna get like the four power ups to do stuff. Like those little red blocks over there, we can't jump them just yet because we don't have the power up for it yet, but. I'm first just gonna pick those up, and then afterwards I'm gonna just go for money bags for just a long period of time. These are crabs. Crabs insta-kill you, just like everything else in this game. But we just sort of jump past and nothing to worry about. Which brings us to the second boss, which is a uh, scary scary crab. He's pretty scary, we did it. We made it past him. Most of the bosses in this game, as long as you know how to do the screen quickly, it becomes a lot easier. Like, the moment you know just how to run through a room, 
everything just becomes a lot safer and it's it's nice because you don't need to worry about stuff so much. Also, every now and then you might see me just enter a screen for like a millisecond just because you need to enter every screen at least once in order to get 100%. So sometimes you'll just see me just blink to a screen and then I'll just go back again because, you know, you gotta. But don't worry about it just for now. Now we're going back into the Tower of Sorrows again. As long as you don't jump, you don't die because the bats are just perfectly aligned for that. Unless you accidentally somehow mess that up. But it's pretty much impossible to mess that up like that. But it makes life a little bit more exciting because it means we only have seven lives remaining for the rest of the game. And there are still some fairly difficult parts coming up. So life is a little bit scary right now i kind of wish it wasn't we could go to the right there where there is a money bag but i'm actually going to save it for later because it's a little bit easier with one of the power-ups which we are going to get pretty soon but yeah we're just gonna have to, we're gonna have to be doing a lot of backtracking once we have all the power-ups anyway just because that's how the game is made there's just a bunch of rooms where we can't really do everything unless we have everything so nothing to worry about i'm not forgetting things i'm just picking them up later so i can just get them all in one fell swoop here's the green man which is the third boss i reset the room over there so you can very easily get on this third volley of balls that he shoots in the fourth one you just jump past no problem at all and now we have a double jump which is awesome because every platformer instantly gets better the moment you get a double jump because it feels like you have more freedom and you definitely do in this game as well so we're going back to this place of, again, I, I hope you enjoy these blue mushrooms. We're going to be seeing them, like, we're going to be seeing them a couple of times, just like uh, some other places, but these ones in particular. Also, we're going to go to the screen to the right over here, just to visit it at least once, you know, because there's actually just no reason at all to ever go to that screen, which uh, is kind of unfortunate. It's a nice screen for sure, just like the screen over here and the screen below it. Beautiful screens. Love them. My favorite screens in the entire game for sure, but... There's just not anything to do there. And it makes me kind of sad. Also, every now and then you might see writing on the wall, which is like, where is the magic symbol? Do you know what it is? And there's going to be a pop quiz about that later. And I'm not even kidding. There's actually going to be a pop quiz about this later. But as long as you just, you guys just remember to listen carefully and also just ignore the fact that I'm going to give you the answer at the end of the game, you're going to be fine. You're going to be good. So here's a uh, scary snakehead demon demon goat. I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's like three of them in the game. They do kill you if you touch them. So don't don't touch the scary snake demon heads, or else you die. And we can't afford to die anymore. We only got seven lives left. I did that wrong, but that's okay. We only got seven lives left, so we can't just afford to be dying here. We got to be careful. To the fourth boss over here. Stop briefly. And that's it. That's that's the boss. You can just do whatever you want here. It's actually the first boss, but like different. He has a tongue now and like wiggly fingers. Pretty spooky. But we get spider gloves, and that's actually the last power up in the game that actually does stuff. From from this point this moment on, we're mostly just going to be focusing on trying to get money bags and whatnot, other such power ups which make a money sign appear. Sometimes you jump through that, and sometimes you just jump over it. And I'm just gonna pretend that I jumped through it, but. This is kind of an annoying one. You do have to pick up the heart as well, which is another, basically another money bag. And I'm kind of sad I didn't pick it up immediately because it does make things just a little bit more difficult and I don't really like it. So we're just going to sit over here, jump on top of that, try that again. One day we'll get it. It's just, the, the timing on this one is just kind of fiddly. And once you get it, you get it. But until then, you're just sort of trying to do that but it all worked out we didn't actually die on that screen that's one of the screens which worries me also you might have seen the what is this with arrows and a three that one's important you gotta remember this one well you don't it comes back later but you gotta remember it also there's another thing down here you have to go left immediately otherwise you get pushed into the spikes and this is probably the one of the harder like money bags to get because you kind of gotta get through the spikes over there and then through the spikes over here, and then you gotta do some difficult jump. It's just a really nasty one for sure. And you can't really just death warp to a checkpoint back because there's a checkpoint in the bottom of the screen here. But we got through it fairly unscathed. So I'm actually pretty happy with how that went. Onwards to the next ridiculously difficult part of the game. There's only like a couple of like really hard things I feel in the game, but the the really hard things in the game are actually really quite difficult, which is it's this this place. And I accidentally pressed down because I'm a smart person who presses the down button whenever he's talking because whenever you're standing on a platform you can't go through your your head bops like that and it's an important thing to do while you're standing still because it's it it relieves boredom. 
And this is obviously a game that's not very tense at all, so you get bored very quickly. But we got to land on the sides of those spiky platforms, get that heart, jump down into a specific point to go through a teleporter, which we can't see right now. And uh, we're just going to see how it's going to go. Reasonably well. Reasonably well, I'm going to say. <laughs> And with that, we're just going to jump through this. It's actually going pretty okay. I'm pretty happy with how it's going so far. But there's still, like, a couple difficult rooms left to go. There's also, here's the cat room. You gotta nod at the cat. To, it gives luck. The room's called the internet. You actually get an achievement for going into this room, I believe. But since we have everything now, we have the double jump and the climbing things, and we're back at pretty much the start of the game. We're going to go back to the left again, where we previously got the blue aura or whatever. And we're going to just be picking up a whole bunch of money bags. First of all, we're going to go over here. Jump straight down, nothing to worry about. This is green over here as well, but we'll deal with it later. You can just have a little sneak peek of that weird blue fish thing, which is sort of sitting around over there. But it's not, just not, not our concern right now. Not our concern. Also, we have to go down here. Because there's a super sneaky money bag over there, which you might forget. And if you just hold right over there, you always land on that moving platform, which does disintegrate, but... It is uh, something that's fairly safe to do, even though it looks kind of spooky. You just hold right and jump, and it always works out. It's actually quite nice. So, we're just going to go all the way to the left over here, just making sure I picked this up. I did, and we're going to go up here to pick up another money bag. And this is also kind of an example of a money bag, which we could have gotten a lot earlier, because you can just jump up here with single jumps, and you only really need the blue blocks. But because we also needed the spider gloves, I decided to go for it later, because we do need to go up here as well. And you might as well just go for everything in one fell swoop. Grab the heart. You can jump, like, to do the second jump over there the moment you pick up the heart, and you'll always land just fine. And with that, we're going back down here. I hope you enjoy long hallways, because there's a couple hallways where you just end up walking through a couple times, and... You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. There's easy... Like, if you have infinite lives, you can just sort of die at specific spots, and you don't really need to worry about things, and... You can just warp back to the checkpoint that way. But seeing as we only have seven lives remaining, I don't really want to risk it. There's a map over here. And I think it shows, like, the important things that you gotta find in order to beat the game for the first time, but it's only for the pop quiz. We're not going to worry about the pop quiz because we know the answer already. And the answer is always the same, so that works out. So we got the money back. Now we're going back again. And there's another money back down here. You might remember the screen as well. And again, we needed another power up to get up here. We needed the double jump because otherwise we couldn't get up there. Do need it. And we did it! Also, you might remember the screen from the point where I said, Oh, we need to go left here, but we can go right. Because we do need to go down that area. You kind of get a sneak peek of the jumps we need to do later on. And again, we are back over here where we can now actually get that money bag as well without dying. Just because we have the spider gloves. And it does help out a lot in order to try and not die so much. It is a, a good thing to try and do. Now, we could have gone back a different way so we wouldn't have to redo this, but, I mean, this this place is not, like, super difficult or anything. And the moment you get the hang of it, you don't really need to worry about it, but... It's, it's a weird place for me. I sometimes get it instantly, and other times I just mess it up over and over. And I don't know why. I, I don't know why, which is why I quieted down there for a sec to make sure. Now we're going to go over to the left over here, there's a spooky face. I hope you enjoy this hallway, by the way, because it's just such a good hallway, and I hope to see it at least two more times in this playthrough. Because it's just so good. It's just like, like, you go left for a while, it's just beautiful. But, this is the hallway I previously spoke of, where you get a kind of a sneak peek. The double jump just makes this easier. You don't need it, because you can just jump over it like that, but again... Why make life difficult when you can also just go here again later? Because we do actually need to go in this direction with the double jump and the spider gloves and everything anyway. So we might as well get it when we have all those things. It just makes life a little bit easier. We need a double jump for this one. And also one that's coming up. Do you see the money bag up there? Do you see Do you see it? We, we need to go through, through this hallway again. I, I really hope you enjoy this hallway because... We're gonna go to the right, and then again, we're gonna go to the left. If you just walk there, you don't take damage from those bottom spikes, which is good. It's actually a really scary room, because the checkpoint's kind of far back, and it's just really frustrating to die there, but we didn't die to anything there. 
So we're gonna jump to the right and just sort of hug the wall over here. If you see the money bag, then you probably have played this game before, but it's over here. It's on the staircase, it's the same color as the stairs as well, so it, it just perfectly blends in to make just the most bullshit of money bags over there. But we also need to go up here, because we got spider gloves and we need to go to this little secret-ish area. And you can actually see it from a screen above us, like you can get to that watery bit over there and you can stand there, so you can actually see this money bag. But the more important part is this, where it says <laughs> And that's also part of the pop quiz later on. It's important that you remember all these things, but again, you don't really need to because it shows up later in the game. As long as you have seen the screen that contains those specific things, so it's... You don't really need to remember anything. So we could just go and jump... Oh, that's interesting. That's actually not at all what I expected. I don't think I've ever... Um, this this room? This is a new one for me. I've, I don't think I've ever actually died on this room before, but... It just had, let's, let's quiet down for a while. Don't know what happened there. I actually don't know. It just, sometimes rooms just don't work. Which is why we're not playing in YOLO mode. Because I'm just quite frankly, not patient or good enough at the game. I can beat the game without dying, just not 100%. There's just, in 100%, there's just a couple rooms where it's just, you find new majestic ways to die every single time. Even if you've never died there before. There's always some place. And it's just, it's, it's so difficult. So we're gonna go over here. What is it? Is this it? No, it's not. There's a spider over here. I think if you touch the spider, you die. I don't think I've ever actually touched any of the spiders in this game, but... I mean, everything else kills you, so it wouldn't be like an overly surprising thing. And we're going back to Mr. Greenhead over here, the Greenman. And we're just gonna take this nice and slow, because we did die a couple extra times, and I kind of want to be... Nice and safe. If I die, like, nine times, I'm just gonna, like, end this recording as well, because... I feel like if I die more than nine times at this point in my life, I just don't really even want to keep the recording. I just want to hide it somewhere. Just hide it somewhere nice and safe so no one ever has to worry about it ever again. But we got 73%. We still got some things to grab before we can actually continue onwards towards the end of the game. What is the magic symbol? I don't know. No idea. Could be anything, really. But there's a money bag over there. We're going to grab that and move on with our lives to the left over here, where there's a bunch of jellyfish. These jellyfish, these can kill you. They, they're they actually pretty good at killing me for some reason. I don't really know why either, but they're just sort of good at things. Yeah, this room actually always kind of scares me because the timing on jumping past these balls is just weirdly strict. And that's also another new way to die. I think your double jump, like your second jump, is actually a little bit less high than your normal jump. Which is why I sort of expected to just double jump here and just get on top of that, but it didn't work out. It means we have four lives remaining, which is probably fine. It is just hopefully fine, right? And grab the money bag over here. This is another endless room. In this one, we are actually going to go right and just reset the room like that because it's a little bit easier to grab the money bag that way. But now that we have that, we're just going to grab this, go down here, and immediately escape this horrible place. This seems like it's impossible. We can actually go to the right here. And we can go back to the left over here to grab the money bag, which is over here in the tower. And with that, we got everything over here, which is lovely. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> it always scares me when I do a jump that I don't intend to do because it's it, it just goes weird. And I don't really like it that much. But whatever, we did it. We're gonna grab this money bag over here. Move on with our lives. There's still some stuff in that downwards area that we have to deal with. But it's not so bad. We got the more difficult stuff for sure. And there's really only one more room that I can think of which can go horribly wrong. But it's probably gonna be fine. It's probably gonna be okay. But for now. We're gonna go jump down here, not touch any of the spikes, slowly crawl downwards. You do need the spider gloves for this particular jump as well. Because if you don't, then you just sort of fall off there, and that's no good. We can actually jump past those spikes and do that again, because otherwise I don't think we were gonna make it. Grab the money bag, and with that, we are back at the start of the game, roughly. But now we can actually start progressing towards the end. There's a couple of different ways where we can go back up here. You can actually just use these walls over here to climb up there. It It is kind of fiddly for sure, and it doesn't really always work, and there's really no reason to do it, but it's just a little bit quicker than going all the way around. But the jumps are fiddly as hell. <laughs> it usually doesn't even work, and honestly, I'm quite surprised they even managed to get it there. There's also just a different route you can take to get just past all of this. You don't need to do these jumps at all once you've done them once, but I actually find this path to be a little bit easier 
than the alternate path. Probably mostly just because I haven't practiced it, but we're back on not this screen. We're actually, well, we're back on this screen, which is like the first jump down, but it's actually platforms now. But this is the screen with the blue fish that you saw for like half a second previously. And you can actually go up here and you can just skip that entire area to the right where you have to jump past all the spike platforms and stuff. But I'm just really bad at it for some reason. Not really sure why. It's just one of those things where I feel like if I practiced it, I probably could do it, but I just never practiced it because it just looks like it just looks like a cluster of nonsense that I, I just don't want to deal with it. You can actually jump back up in the hole by just jumping really tightly in that hole again, but I don't want to deal with that, man. Plus, there's some stuff up here which I still need to get as well. And it's, this is easier. <laughs> it's just easier to go up here. It honestly is. So we're not going to deal with any of that nonsense. We're just going to jump down. Home, grab that. Destroy some platforms over here, jump past the bat, grab the bell, everything's perfect. So there's a couple different directions we can go here. We're gonna go over here because there's some rooms here that we need to visit mostly. But also some money bags that we still need to grab as well. And we're just gonna take it nice and slow. There's a couple of mushrooms, a couple of platforms. We got plenty of space to do whatever we want. There's another money bag over here, which we did still need to grab. So another reason to go down there. But you don't really need to take this particular jump, which is kind of scary looking because this is a different way you can get up there as well Because first we're gonna grab that money bag over there But there is another money bag on the screen. You might not see it, but it is over here Which we also need to get but you can actually just use that really small ledge over there to wall jump off of And it's not super difficult plus you can't die doing this and you can actually just land back up here as well And it just makes life a little bit easier than trying to go all the way around. So this is probably the hardest room in the game if you've never done it before. The thing you just kind of need to look at, the bottom right prawn shoots a ball, the ball hits the wall, and the moment the ball hits like the left wall over there, we're gonna jump up on the left platform, jump twice to go over the ball that the one in the top right shoots, and then we're just gonna jump past everything and we're gonna move on with our lives. That's the way I do it. I'm just gonna quiet down over here to actually do it properly. Because it's kind of a scary room for sure and I don't like to deal with it. I messed it up. Le definitely don't try to wall jump there because the wall jump does just straight up kill you. But I did by accident. And with that, we're past the prawn room. It's, it's such a ridiculous room. It really is. It's, there's just balls everywhere. I don't like to deal with balls everywhere. But it's, it's the wall, the room I, like, had the most trouble with on my first playthrough, for sure. Even though it's so small. Like, it's just a single room, but it's so difficult, for sure. It really is, if you don't know what you're doing, because it's hard to tell when you actually have to jump. And there we go. Happy to deal with that one. <sighs> but we do actually need to go through that prawn room one more time later on because there is a caveat to this game's like 100% nonce. It's really dumb, I think. I don't think it needs to be in the game for sure. But it is. And we're gonna have to deal with a kind of annoying thing for sure. But it, it's no problem. It's no problem. We still got three lives left. We can do this. Also, this room's kind of weird looking. There's like jellyfish and bells and just a little bit of everything all over the place here. I don't know if anything in this room can actually kill you, but it does look very scary. Also, there's a sign here that says safety. We're gonna go there to grab that money bag and then go back again. We're gonna follow the sign to the danger. And we're gonna lose. And the main reason we're gonna lose is because there is a money bag in the lose room. It's, it's good, because if you... Lose, if you grab the lose ball, it says, oh dear, I'm afraid you just lost the game. But take your heart, victory, maybe, maybe I'm being your rich. Keep searching to find the solution. And that puts us back at the start of the game. Zero power-ups, we gotta do it all over again. But we did, we do still have all of the money bags. So we don't need to grab any of those anymore. We just basically need to speed run our way back to the end of the game again and then just go to the win bubble which is a little bit more difficult if you've never done it before for sure because there is a pop quiz attached to it but it is kind of annoying that you have to lose first in order to win I don't really like it that much but simultaneously once you've beaten the game a couple times it'll only take like six minutes to redo it all so it's it's not too bad for sure but uh, bleh. I, it's bleh, bleh. Yeah, you, you get me? You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like... Why? 
but whatever. It, I, it, it is what it is. I'm not gonna be too worried about it. It does mean we don't have to take all these little detours here and there, I suppose. So that's kind of cool, but... Meh. Just a big old meh for me is all I'm saying. Just uh, a big old thumbs down. But then again, it's the designer's choice and whatever he wants to do, it's just whatever. If he wants to do this, then it is what it is. And we're just gonna deal with it. Especially with a game that's not this long as well, I suppose. Like, if the game was, like, twice as long, I'd be much more annoyed with it, for sure. But seeing as the game is only, like, a video in length... Whatever, man. Just whatever, man. But it does mean we only have three lives to beat the game at this point, so I'm a little bit concerned, for sure. And uh, there's, there's just so many places where things can go wrong, and... Uh, I'm just I I just wish I would just was a robot, you know. In times like this, I just wish I was a robot because it would make life so much better, for sure. But as you can see, that particular jump, the bat is so much further away when you do it at that specific like moment in time because it well it just is the bat and the platform just aren't on the same pace at all. And if you try to jump after that, you just have to wait for so long before the bat and the platform are sort of in a position again where you can actually just try to do the jump again without dying. And it's um, it's better to just reset the room at that point. And at least it's not that difficult to reset the room, but it can be kind of annoying. For sure. But whatever. It's all good. We made it past it. Jumping past the crabs. Gonna see the big old scary crab one more time. It is pretty big. It is pretty scary, but none of our concern. Grab the Crimson Aura to activate the red block blocks. And slowly but surely, we're getting all of our things back. It's only like marginally quicker now than like the first time we went through it all just because I elected to mostly grab only those power-ups before going for anything else. But, you know, it does mean we get to see some cool hallways again and it, there's, there's like the, the scary monster with the teeth that's made out of walls and platforms is pretty spooky is pretty spooky times and maybe we won't actually die here this time which i don't even know how i died <laughs> but this just that's just how this game works like you just always find some new dumb way to die and it's especially obvious once you start playing in game modes where you don't have infinite lives and especially so when you only have one life because uh it's so hard man <laughs> it's such a difficult game it really is but if you just let spend like eight hours practicing it, it's not so bad, you know? It's, it's not too difficult. Just spend eight hours practicing a 20 minute game and then by then it's like, whatever, you just jump through it all. No problem. No problem anywhere at all. But we're gonna keep going. Slowly but surely, we'll make it to the end. See the green man one more time. Jump past his third volley. Whoop, that nearly went wrong. <laughs> but then again, that is just this game. It always nearly goes wrong. But in the end, as long as you make it, then who gives a crap, you know? It, it is what it is. There's only, like, a couple more difficult rooms left to go. We got three lives. We should probably be fine. We should hopefully be fine. We'll, we'll be fine. I, I don't see anything that could possibly go wrong from this point on. We just need to grab our spider gloves, jump past this weird spiky platforms, go through the prawn room, and then we're pretty much done. So, I mean... What's there to worry about? Nothing. There's nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. I am terrified. Because I actually didn't expect my first, like, attempt to properly record this to go this well. But, hey! Sometimes things go well and I'm <laughs> happy about it, you know? What are you gonna do? But we got the glove, we're just gonna go walk back through this path again. Which we haven't seen before. We haven't seen the boss in reverse. You can just hold left. But still, it's, it's, it's something, you know? It's something we haven't seen before and that's what matters. That's the most important part of it all. Now we just gotta get through the spiky room, get past the prawn room, and we're good, pretty much. Can we do it? Probably, because that room went well, so, I mean, there's really not much else to worry about. We could grab the checkpoint in the bottom here, but I am I like to take risky chances for no real particular reason. Mostly it's just it takes too long to go all the way to that checkpoint for me, I'm just not that patient. I'm not patient enough to deal with it. Plus. When we go through here, we can see the alternate path to, to go to the, the place with the with the spikes and the things and not have to deal with the actual spikes and the things. So, you know, it all works out. It all works out with uh, showing you how to play this video game over here. 
And that's what matters. So I'm actually gonna grab the checkpoint over here, just restart the room again, just in case. This is the last room, really. Like, until we just go to the end. I just did that so wrong. Oh my god, that was so bad. I, I just sort of misinterpreted all of what happened there, but hey, whatever. We're just gonna try it again. Calmly. It all worked out. Okay, we're done with the game now, effectively. Oh, uh, God, that room, it scares me every time, and I always find some new ways to move just slightly incorrectly, and it just messes me up, man. I don't know why, but whatever. Do we know the magic symbol? Do you know the magic word? We probably do. The magic symbol was the one with the three in it. The magic word was the... We're gonna win. So here we have a whole bunch of rooms. There is the word and with this, the arrows and the three on it. Now the pop quiz is what do, what does it mean? What what does it mean? I don't know. I absolutely don't know. But what it basically means is that we have to go counterclockwise into the alphabet with the word in the top left over there. And if you do that with every single letter, you end up with the word super. And when you jump into this. You win! You go through the door, you get it over here, you get the wind bubble, and presto, we're done. Boop! So it says boop because we're playing in cat mode. If you're playing in normal mode, I think, then it says like, uh, congratulations, you did it, you win the game. And if you play in YOLO mode, it says like, hashtag YOLO, hashtag no big deal, hashtag swag or something like that. It's pretty silly, but there's like an achievement with all the text in it. But a winner is you! If we had completed this with less than 100%, there would be something like, there is still stuff to explore, but if you get 100% and it says a winner is you. And if we press A, we just end up back here. And we can actually still double jump as well. We still have all of our power-ups. It's just when you lose, you lose all of your power-ups as well. So we could actually just go back to the prawn room again. But obviously, I'd rather not do that. But yeah, that that was you have to win the game on the normal normal modes. I'm just gonna stay here because it's the most happy room in the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Next time we play, we're either playing something else or we're playing in spicy mode. Because if we go quit the title and then yes, then we can do a new game and there's an extra spicy mode, which I've actually never played. I've only played the original. But I just had such a good time with it. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to see you guys next time, whenever that may be. Bye-bye. <laughs>